Welcome to Shawnee the Shawn Man and Tim. What was that? <laughs> Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. What we got for you today is a center console swap or a cup holder mod where we're gonna take out the 96 through 98 Toyota 4Runner center console and we're gonna replace it with a 99 through 2002 center console that has the cup holders. So if you wanna go from this center console to this center console, we're gonna show you how. Some things to consider when doing this is you have to get the right parts from the donor vehicle. The first thing you need to get is your center console. Get the mounting bracket that secures the center console to the body. Make sure you grab the tub for the e-brake. And last, grab the e-brake itself. Another thing to consider when doing this is to understand whether or not you have a rear heater. If you have a rear heater, find a donor vehicle that has a rear heater. If you don't have a rear heater, grab the one that doesn't. Otherwise, it's not gonna be a plug and play, and we really want this to be as plug and play as possible. The benefit of this mod is that you have a little bit higher armrest, you get the cup holders, which is the main benefit, you have a little cubby here to put some stuff in, and the lid has an extra little compartment I can put stuff in, and then it goes even further, so I have the remainder of my compartment. The 96 through 98, it's just a lid and then your compartment. The other thing to consider is where you're gonna relocate your switches. On my 2002, I did a little filler plate mod where I have some buttons in this area and on the center stereo surround, I also did a modification there to where I have some switch blanks where I can put some switches in there and that would be another way that you could relocate these switches. Today, we're not gonna do any fancy modifications to the center console surround or to the center console itself here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these switches and I'm gonna relocate them to the left of the steering wheel where I have some blank spaces. If you're lucky, you have some blank spaces. If not, you may need to find another place for these. The bottom line is you will need to relocate these switches because they're not gonna fit in the new donor center console anymore. Now when you're grabbing the parts from the donor vehicle, you're grabbing it from a 99 or maybe a 2001 Toyota 4Runner, you wanna make sure you grab the tub and be aware that you may need to cut out some part of your body in order to fit the tub so the holes line up. I got lucky, I have a 1998, this is from a 99, and the tubs actually match up. There is this little tab here that's extra, but besides that, the holes line up and they line up in the body. All right, let's get started with this sick mod. So we're in Timmy's driveway and it has a slight slant. If you are on level ground, you may not need to chalk your tires. But because we're gonna be disconnecting the e-brake, we have the tires chalked so it doesn't roll anywhere. Now you don't wanna put undue stress on the parking pole and the automatic transmission. So on level ground, you're not really putting much stress on that, but on unlevel ground with a slight slant, like in the driveway, it's gonna be pulling on that. And although it might hold it, it's not a good idea. All right, so we're in the rig. We took out the driver's seat just so we had more room to film. That's not necessary. These screws right here, there's one on this side and on this side. You could just push the seat all the way back. You don't need to take the seat out. So we're gonna take these out. It's okay. All right, we got one on the passenger side as well. Small little screw. All right, we got two 10 millimeter bolts inside here. We're gonna get a long extension and we're gonna go get those. We'll just leave those in there for now. So on the back side, when you slide it back and then lift it up, this is gonna hold you up. So this guy we have to take off. Just pull it off, pretty simple. So we got these two screws out, two 10 millimeter bolts. And on the rear, we have that little plastic cover on the rear here switch, if you have one. I'm just gonna grab this, just yank up. And so this is, becomes free on this 98. We have all these connections that we're gonna to need to disconnect. We've got these little tabs. Just get that one out. The security has these little plastic things holding in the speaker and the light. You just kind of twist it out of there. It's got a little rubber grommet. So then on the bottom here, in the top, you've got these little these little tabs right here. It's just holding it on. If you take a closer look, you'll be able to see what that's all about. And on this side, we've got one more. 
just a typical Toyota plug. Just gonna squeeze it in and pull it out. The last thing holding this in place is this little plastic guy here. So we're gonna get some pliers and we're gonna poke that through. So we're just gonna squeeze this in, push it through. Now we're free. So we got what we need to actually pull this out. We're gonna put this up just a little bit. We're gonna take it out all the way later to get the wires through. But this allows us to clear the sides and then slide this back. Now the only other thing holding this on here is this clip that's attached to the center console. And so I'm gonna flip this around and we're gonna get that off. So just another standard Toyota clip. So we just slipped it off right here and then we're actually gonna unplug the plug. Push in, pull out, everything's disconnected now. So we can pull the center console out of the way. So this bracket is unique for 98 center console in order for it to mount properly. The 99 and 2000 is a little different and the 0102 is even, yet again, a little different. So again, can't stress enough how crucial it is to make sure you get this little bracket when you're grabbing your center console from your donor vehicle. All right, so we got the three 10 millimeter bolts loose. gonna get this bracket out of the way. We have this little clip here and I'm just gonna push it in and pull it out. Now while you're in here it might be a good time to uh, search for buried treasure um, including this gummy worm. Eat that later. So now that we're in here we're gonna go after the two 12 millimeter bolts that hold the e-brake on. Before we do that, we need to get this 10 millimeter e-brake cable nut holding the e-brake on. And there's also a little tab down here that we're also gonna bend back to free the brake cable. And then the e-brake will pull right out. So to free the parking brake cable with the two 10 millimeter nuts, the bottom one and the top one have flanges and it makes it hard for you to get a 10 millimeter open and wrench on there. So I got some pliers just holding it, then my 10 millimeter on top to loosen it up. All right, now we can get that one on its own. This one should be hand tight by now. If it's too tight, get yourself a deeper 10 millimeter socket, get it on there and get that second nut off. Now we got that done. We're gonna go for the two 12 millimeter bolts holding the e-brake in place. If we turn the e-brake assembly over, we can see this little tab here that we need to bend out of the way to clear the cable so we can get this out. Just gonna pry this back. And then that frees the cable. Just got like a deep socket. This happens to be a 14. He slides it over here so we can get these little fingers in enough to push this through this little bucket. So now that's through so we can get this little tub bucket out of the way. There's two 12 millimeter bolts. We're gonna get these undone and we're gonna take this little bucket out. There's different buckets as well as different brackets. So you gotta get both when you're pulling from your donor vehicle. I'm gonna try to pry this guy up. And I'm gonna get my donor one in here just to test fit. And what's nice about this is that everything lines up. I have a 98. This tub came out of a 99. And so we can see all the bolt holes line up. Now, Foreigner for Leon and some other people in my research have said that they need to cut out a little bit of the body here in order to fit the tub that they got. So just be aware that if these holes don't line up perfectly or if the tub can't go all the way over, you may need to modify your body to fit it. We wanna get this bezel around the shifters out of the way. And in order to do so on my limited model, I'm gonna to need to get this screw out of the way 
And for those of you that do have a push button four wheel drive like I do, or a limited model, you're gonna have this same JIS screw that you're gonna need to undo. If you don't have a limited model like mine with a push button four wheel drive, you might have a J shifter like this one in Tim's 2000 Toyota 4Runner. This one's a lot easier. All you have to do is start untwisting it and then it'll come right off and then that will free it. You can get this part off after that. So we're gonna go after this little screw. It can be a little stubborn, it has Loctite on it. We have a JIS screwdriver here and it's a little tight by a little, I mean a lot. Because this has Loctite on it, be careful, you don't wanna strip this. Get a screwdriver that fits in there really well or a JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard. All right, there's that little screw. See a whole bunch of blue Loctite on there. If you have a limited model like me with the push button four wheel drive, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is disconnect this little switch here. So I have a little screwdriver here. I'm gonna get in there and pry up so it can free the clip. So what I did is I pushed down on the little part that's grabbing right here, I pushed down really hard and then I pried it down underneath this top part so that this could just slide right out. It's this little lip right here that gets caught on this guy. So now this is free, we can get this out of our way. I'm going to start to cut these zip ties so I can free the wires, get them out of their little harness and relocate them, reroute them to our blank switch panel inserts. I'm just going to free this wire harness push in these little tabs and push it through this metal bracket here. And you can see all the wires here that go to the different switches and the zip ties that we're gonna undo here. Just gonna cut these. Just be careful not to cut the wires. That would not be good. And with some of these wires, they're in a harness with each other, wrapped up with some electrical tape. So I'm gonna start to cut this tape. I'm gonna free up all the wires and get the wires for the security, the wires for the ECT button, and also the wires for the rear window for it to roll down all separated so we can reroute them. So I took off all the electrical tape or the loom that held all the wires together so that I could free the four wheel drive button connector and also the e-brake connector from this series of wires so I can grab the wires I need and reroute them behind. We took off the center stereo surround. We're not gonna show this, but if you click on the link above, you can see how you can remove this. This was mainly for us to show the wires inside this area that we're going to route behind here, but it may be unnecessary. You may not need to take the center stereo surround off, but we did just for filming purposes. Next, we're gonna go after these 12 millimeter bolts that hold on this surround here. There's four of them. That way we can gain access to these switch blanks and route our wires to the appropriate places. All four 10 millimeter bolts are now out. Now we can pull this down. And now we have some room to work so we can reroute our wires behind this area. So we got the wires that we needed routed behind here. And I'm just doing a test fit just to make sure that they reach. And it's pretty close. Any less and they might not reach, so this is gonna be pretty tight. But they do. So we got some of our switches we are relocating to our blanks. And in order to get the blanks out, super simple. Just squeeze it, just push it right through. Nothing to it. And I need three, so I'm gonna push out all three here. So I got my connectors where I want them. And if we take a look at the panel here, this is how I put them, the security, the window button, and then the ECT button as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect my security light and my speaker.
because this cable doesn't need to go through this little hole. I gotta make sure that I get this one last. So I'm gonna get the ECT button hooked up. Hear it click. And then I'm gonna bring this up closer so I can get the last button, which is the window button. All right, hooked up. Just get this back in place. I'm gonna get the bottom in first because this part hangs you up. And then get your 10 millimeter bolts back in to secure it. Okay, we got all four 10 millimeter bolts back in to hold this thing back on. Now we're ready to put this bracket back in, the new bracket, since the bracket will be unique to the center console that you remove. Just gonna get our two bolts that hold the bracket to the body. And then there's one bolt that holds it to this plastic piece that controls your rear heater. So you can see the two 10 millimeter bolts here and the one here. Just gonna snug these up. Next, we're gonna get our new tub that came with our donor center console. Again, this bracket and the tub and the e-brake are very important to making this plug and play. Let's slip this through here. Pops right into place and these little fingers catch it. We're gonna tighten down two 12 millimeter bolts. If you remember, the e-brake actually has its own bolts, but we can't put those on those sides, so we're gonna do that in just a moment. We're just gonna snug these down nice and tight. With the e-brake bracket, we have to get the cable in place, so we'll just route it through. And then we have this tab down here that will bend back. Just use a screwdriver, bend it right back. Okay, bend that back. I want enough of the cable sticking through so we can get the nuts on. And I'm just gonna grab a nut and put it on there so we don't lose it. Let's get a nut on there. Just a little bit so we don't lose it. And we'll get the e-brake bolts in. The e-brake cable is secured in the e-brake. We have the little 10 millimeter nut on the threads. And one thing to pay attention to is how many threads are exposed before you take this off so you can get it adjusted back correctly. A properly adjusted e-brake should have approximately seven to eight clicks. I'm gonna secure the remaining 12 millimeter bolts to hold down the e-brake. You don't want this cable too tight for now, so you can adjust this and line up the holes so you're not fighting these bolts getting them in. All right, that's pretty tight. So next we wanna adjust this first 10 millimeter nut. We wanna tighten it down a little bit more. Then we're gonna see if the e-brake feels good, and then we'll lock it down with the second 10 millimeter nut. Because we haven't adjusted anything with the brakes, and we've just literally adjusted this nut here, I'm gonna try to get seven to nine clicks as stated in the factory service manual so we can get it adjusted back correctly. That was about seven. I think we'll call that good for now. If we need to go back in there and adjust it, we can. We're gonna put the second 10 millimeter nut on there to lock it down. Like we did before, we're gonna hold it with some needle nose pliers and then we're gonna tighten it against the other nut. We got that nice and tight. We got this little connector here. We're gonna plug back into the e-brake now that we have it in place. We're now ready to put the center console back in place. To make it easier, I'm gonna pull this part out, just push it from behind. And that way I can clear the switch back here a lot easier. We'll lift it over, kind of have it back and then push it forward. It's important is these things clear up here. All right.
right? So that's in place. Now we're gonna secure these two. We're gonna get the 10 millimeter bolts from the top. And on the back, we can put this back on and put the control knob back on the lever. We got two of these 10 millimeter bolts we're gonna put back in. Got those tight. We'll get our little screws back on each side. For those with a rear heater control, plug your connector back in. We're getting our stereo surround back in. We didn't show this in this video, but if you take off all the knobs, take out the AC button, you can remove the faceplate to reveal the two screws. You're gonna remove those two screws and then you can just pull out the stereo surround. We're gonna get this bezel piece back on. Slip it over the top and before you push it down all the way, get your connector back in place that fought you all the way out. Kind of push it down and then we'll get our screw back in. Here's our little screw with the Loctite on it. All right, that's tight. And the last order of business to complete this puzzle and this sick mod is the whole reason we're doing this is for the cup holders. Just slide this around here. Boom. Close the dynamite. Now, I have a place to put my drink. Or your 40. <laughs> All right, so we're done with this sick mod. It was truly plug and play with my 1998 Toyota 4Runner. In order for it to be plug and play for you, you really need to make sure that the donor vehicle you're getting the center console from, that you grab the e-brake, the e-brake tub, and the mounting bracket for the 10 millimeter bolts that go inside. If your model has the rear heater, make sure that you have the rear heater and the console that you're pulling from your donor vehicle. Like this one here does not have it. This is not an original sick mod. This has been done by many people before. Thanks to the Toyota forums, people offered their suggestions and their comments about how they were successful with this and all the brackets for the different year models that you may want to view. We'll put some links in the video description so that you can go to some of these write-ups and learn more about the different models, 96 through 98. 99 and 2000 and the 2001 and 2002 has slightly different mounting positions so this bracket is really crucial to have when you pull your donor center console so all you guys and gals out there with a 96 through 98 toyota foreigner that want to do a sick center console mod with a cup holder you guys can do it now you have everything you need to be successful and have some cup holders with all that said we thank you for watching toyota time with timmy the tool man and sean We'll be back with more videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye. Sick mods.